Well, welcome everyone. My name is John Bailey. I'm the president of the IRP Graduate School, and I have the great pleasure today of speaking with Dan Goldman. Um, first, I just want to say thank you, Dan, for talking to me today. I talked to you a little bit before we began here and just said, you know, what an honor it is. You've been a huge influence on my own personal leadership. You've been a tremendous influence on my institution, the IRP Graduate School, mm -hmm. and the wider field of restorative practices and really anyone um, that's interested in social and emotional learning and especially relational leadership. So thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Thank you, John. So I thought I'd ask a few questions uh, and, and as much as possible, keep it rooted in the context of what leaders are facing today. Mm -hmm. And I think increasingly the world of work is complex, mm -hmm. spurred on especially by COVID-19, yeah. political unrest. We're obviously watching an economic realignment mm -hmm. around the globe. And so the pace of change is accelerating. And I think as we do in the field of restorative practices, you've really focused on an aspect of human relationships uh, and human development that in, in essence, it seems to be, it's quite timeless. So, um, you know, I think that the, it might be a way to sort of ground leaders in a time of unprecedented change. Um, the idea of emotional intelligence of something about our leadership that is actually um, essential and probably always has been true. I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but um, you know, why would you say, you know, emotional intelligence is just as important today as it may have been 50, 100, or maybe even a thousand years ago? Uh, actually, I think it may be more important today. Uh, we're talking during the time of COVID. Uh, businesses are suffering. Bus people are working remotely. We don't have the same hands-on, in-person relationship. There's huge anxiety. You don't want to get the virus. You don't want to bring it home to your family or your friends. So uh, the need to, for a leader to manage his or her own emotions has never been greater, at least in my, my lifetime, for sure. Uh, and then the need to be able to communicate, to relate effectively on Zoom, you know, at a distance, however it may be. That takes a lot of empathy. You know, the ingredients of emotional intelligence are self-awareness. You use that to manage yourself, use it for resilience, for agility, to adapt, to keep your eye on your goals despite the difficulties of the present time. All of those have to do with how you manage yourself as a leader. You're leading yourself. Then there's the question of how do you lead other people in these times? And uh, here, empathy and social effectiveness the second, the third and fourth part of emotional intelligence are crucial. You know, um, on Zoom, you can't have eye contact and see the person at the same time. You just can't. It's just not the same as being in person. You can't pick up the uh, subtle cues of how someone is feeling that you get if you're in a conference room or across the table or sitting next to them. It's different. You need to focus more on what is, how is the person receiving what I'm saying, what I'm doing? You need more empathy. And that of course is the basis of being able to be effective in, as a leader, uh, to have the kind of interaction where people feel that you have some rapport, where you have a connection, uh, where you can be persuasive, where you can listen, where you can understand a person and use that to guide that person in the direction you need them to go. So I'd say, uh, you know, it's always been around, it's always been critical for leadership, but today, I think we need it more than ever. Thank you, Dan. And you, you alluded to it, but in the world of work where over the last eight months, we all find ourselves um, increasingly adopting technologies like video conferencing and Zoom, mm -hmm. um, and maybe, maybe some of us not entirely uh, uh, willingly, but you know, in order to do the work we do, of course, we're, we're using these mediums more frequently now. Are there any particular emotional intelligence competencies that leaders should keep in mind as they increasingly are leading virtual organizations in addition to in-person organizations? Yeah. Well, first, don't forget yourself. Start with how you're doing because you wanna be calm and clear. But in order to do that, you have to handle your own anxiety, your own upset, whatever it may be. So resilience is critical. Uh, in the emotional intelligence model, we, it's part of self-management. The question is, do you, do you have a way to recover back to calm and clear from whatever emotional state you may find yourself in? You wanna lead from that space. 
So I'd say that's critical, uh, the self-management part of it. And then the second is empathy, being able to tune in to the people you're leading. What are their needs? What are their fears? What are their feelings? And how can you help them through that so that you can collectively focus on your shared mission? That's what leadership is all about. One of the other impacts of the pandemic, um, you know, we've discussed this internally at the IRP Graduate School and with some of our partners and colleagues. The inter one of the interesting impacts has been, I don't think there's now an organization on the planet, whether it's a for-profit institution, a higher education institution, who is not as one of their top three priorities, um, thinking about the quality of relationships and their ability to empathize with what people are going through right now. Um, so as also as a, as a leading thinker in organizational psychology, what advice would you give institutions who are now um, not seeing emotional intelligence as a nice to have, like it's mm -hmm. wonderful to have a few leaders who are emotionally intelligent or to maybe work a little bit on it this year, but seeing it as a top priority across the culture of an institution, what advice would you give institutions now for making a more robust commitment to developing emotional intelligence? Well, first of all, I think it's important to understand why it matters. I happen to be uh, in the middle of writing an article for the Harvard Business Review that reviews the data and it's very strong. It shows that emotional intelligence in leaders particularly makes people more loyal, makes them want to give their best, uh, makes them less likely to leave. And uh, it also has to do with what would it take to make your organization emotionally intelligent right. as an organization? Can you embed the values and the importance of emotional intelligence in hiring, in uh, performance management, you know, in uh, spotting high potentials, in training and development, and in fact, in the whole culture? <clears throat> Can you have leaders and norms for interacting that make emotional intelligence a hallmark of what it's like to be there? Because, you know, let's, let's think about attracting the most talented people and keeping them. Consider what is the emotional salary you're paying. It's not just about the money. People who have talent, who are the most sought after employees and the leaders of the future are able to go wherever they want. So do they like the boss that they're working for? They hate the boss that they're working for? They love the boss? Well, the more emotionally intelligent that person is, that leader is, more people will love that boss, the more loyal they'll be, the more they'll want to keep the job uh, and stay with the organization. So if you value the long-term sustainability of your own organization, you'll consider how can we make this a more emotionally intelligent workplace? Great, thank you. Uh, one just final question. I think one of the, the real brilliant aspects of your work and one of the reasons why I know it's had such an impact is, um, you know, you might say it differently, but you make explicit and concrete mm -hmm. so that people can learn on purpose what they otherwise might think is, well, you're either just born that way, right. or maybe you had the, the great accidental biography that you wound up being an incredibly emotionally intelligent person. And for some people that admittedly is probably true. Um, but I guess I, I'd love to hear your argument for why leaders, even if it's maybe not your first inclination to see it as um, something that one does naturally, to say mm -hmm. you can you can choose to develop in this area and do so deliberately. So what would be your argument in, in favor of that? Yeah. Well, uh, it's a very strong argument actually. You know, IQ is very hard to budge over your lifetime. It's really how quickly your brain can learn uh, new information. Emotional intelligence is very different. It's learned in life. It's learned and learnable at any point. It has to do with your motivation. Do you care if you want to improve you can, and with a high level executive, I'd say, you know, get a coach who, who knows how to work with emotional intelligence, who can help you, for example, understand where are your strengths, where are your limitations? Where can you get, uh, you know, the most bang for the buck by working on one or another or another aspect of emotional intelligence? It's not just one thing. I have a, a map of 12 competencies that, <clears throat> that um, reside in the four domains of emotional intelligence. Where, where are you on that map? It's like going to a doctor for physical. What are your triglycerides? What's your HDL cholesterol and so on? They vary. It's the same with emotional intelligence. 
Each of us has, <coughs> excuse me, each of us is better at some aspects, not so good at others. The question is, where will you benefit most by improving and then work with a coach to get better and better? Where are you now? What habits do you have that you're blind to that you might wanna change? Uh, and what will make you a more effective leader in every interaction so that the people who you're leading will want to give their best, will want to be high performers for you. Well, that's brilliant, Dan, thank you. I really appreciate you joining us today. I'll, I'll end up by once again saying, uh, it's a real pleasure to spend time with you personally. Um, and I'll give you the final word. Is there anything else you'll wanna, that you wanna say to, we have you know, hundreds of business leaders joining from all over the world in a variety of industries? Um, any final words before we close? Well, I'd like to remind everyone everywhere that emotional intelligence matters the same wherever you are, whatever you do. It's all about people and how well you can help guide them and get them to want to give their best for the mission that you're part of. Wonderful. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, John. All right. Thank you.